this uh, lecture on ballistic galvanometer uh, we will we'll discuss about uh, current and charge sensitivity electromagnetic damping and logarithmic damping now we have already discussed about the moving coil galvanometer and the condition which is required to decide whether the galvanometer can be used as a non oscillatory or dead bit and the condition when it will be used as a uh, oscillatory or ballistic now <coughs> Uh, as per uh, according to the syllabus we should more confined on the ballistic galvanometer so further what we need to know is that uh, ballistic galvanometer basically is the instrument for the measurement of the charge which is sent through it in a short interval of time right now uh, for the correct measurement of charge uh, the whole of the charge should pass before the galvanometer has moved appreciably so the time of swing has to be greater than the time of discharge now the damping uh, in the case of the ballistic galvanometer should be very very small for oscillatory motion okay so few uh, conditions okay uh, which should be uh, which is essential for the ballistic galvanometer okay uh, is that number one uh, the time period t has to be has to be large the time period has to be large the moment of inertia mi moment of inertia of the coil okay this has to be large large and torsional constant c should be small okay and uh, what we know what we do is that to increase i uh, we use copper wire coil okay and to decrease C, uh, that is a torsional couple, a thin and a long phosphor strip suspension is used. So that is what we do. Uh, secondly, second point is the damping is the rotor damping has to be very small. Okay. So uh, what we need to do is that uh, uh, <coughs> we can use electromagnetic damping. Electro magnetic damping has to be very small so for that we use non-conducting frame for that we use non-conducting frame such as ivory now what we do is that we will consider a galvanometer of having n turns we will consider having n turns area a and moment of inertia i suspended from torsion wire uh, having a torsional constant or torque constant torsional constant c in a magnetic field in a magnetic field uh, induction b okay now we pass the current for a very short interval of a time through the coil and that time interval is delta t short interval short interval of time okay now during the current pulse the torque at any instant when current is uh, i is given by tau is equal to n i a cross b or n i a b when the plane of the coil is plane of the coil is parallel parallel to the magnetic field now the angular impulse given to the galvanometer coil is equal to the the angular impulse given to the magnetic uh, galvanometer coil is equal to the change in angular momentum and is given by n a b 0 to delta t i dt okay that will be given by n a b into q into is which will be equal to i into omega where i is the moment of inertia of the coil and omega is the angular velocity with which the coil begins to rotate okay now the initial angular momentum i omega correspond to initial kinetic energy of the coil and is converted to elastic potential energy of the torsion fiber now which is the energy spent in twisting the suspension wire so kinetic energy which is given by half i omega square must be equal to the potential energy is equal to 0 to theta naught c theta d theta or 
i omega square is equal to c theta naught square as we know that <coughs> the time period is given by t is equal to 2 pi under root i by c or i is equal to c t square by 4 pi square hence eliminating eliminating omega okay uh, we get from the previous equation obviously we get n square a square b square q square is equal to c square t square theta naught square uh, by 4 pi square or q is equal to t by 2 pi c by n a b into theta naught is equal to k prime by theta naught okay <coughs> the k naught is known as the constant or ballistic constant rather or ballistic reduction factor and theta naught is the first throw or ballistic throw okay now uh, if theta naught is the is measured in mm is measured in mm on the scale with lamp and scale arrangement then k dash is defined as the charge required k dash is defined as the charge required to produce one mm deflection one mm deflection of light reflected from the mirror attached with a suspension wire on the scale placed at a distance of the scale placed at a scale placed at a distance of one meter so and it is known as this will be known as figure of merit of galvanometer it is known as figure of merit figure of merit of galvanometer okay now <clears throat> uh, there is a damping obviously which will be there okay so we need to take into uh, if, uh, take uh, we need to uh, no consider those things also so in overcoming uh, the dampening forces the swings get progressively shorter and shorter right so what happens is this that if theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 be the successive uh, throw theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 be the successive throw okay uh, uh, swings rather to the left or the blue right to the left or right it is found that ex it is experimentally found that the ratio of consecutive at deflection is constant quantity that is theta 1 by theta 2 equal to theta 2 by theta 3 equal to theta 3 by theta 4 is equal to theta 4 by theta 5 is equal to dot 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 is equal to d which is a constant now <coughs> What we know is that uh, the con this constant is known as decrement. Now, this d it is known as decrement. Okay, and its logarithm and its logarithm is known as logarithmic decrement. That is, theta one by theta two is equal to theta two by theta three equal to dot 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 is equal to e to the power lambda. For complete vibration, for one complete oscillation rather, theta one by theta three is equal to d square is equal to e to the power 2 lambda which is obviously is equal to theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3 ultimately we get theta 1 by theta 3 thus the value of decrement when the coil completes the quarter of vibration will be e to the power lambda by 2 and hence the first true deflection theta naught is given by theta naught by theta 1 is equal to e to the power lambda by 2 or theta naught equal to theta 1 into e to the power lambda by 2 expanding this e to the power lambda by 2 and neglecting the higher order of lambda we get theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 substituting this in the previous equation we will get q is equal to t by 2 pi c by n a b in place of theta naught we will place theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 so this is the final thing final uh, relation now <coughs> what we will do is that uh, we will consider again the current sensitivity so talking about the current sensitivity uh, uh, right uh, current sensitivity is basically defined as the deflection in millimeters uh, 
produced current sensitivity we'll discuss about current sensitivity sensitivity okay it is defined as the deflection deflection a deflection in millimeters okay produces on a scale placed at a placed at a distance of uh, one one meter from the mirror from the mirror of dead bit dead bit So, current sensitivity as subscript I will be given by d theta by di, which will be obviously equal to n a b by c. Okay, from the earlier relation which we have already have for the moving coil galvanometer that is theta is equal to i n a b by c. So, this is your current sensitivity d theta by di. Similarly, uh, we need to discuss charge sensitivity. And it is defined as the deflection in again deflection in mm. Okay, mm produced produced on a scale placed again at at a placed distance of one m one m distance of one m. Okay, from the needle from the needle. Then a charge of then a charge of 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb is allowed to pass through the galvanometer. This is allowed to pass through the galvanometer. Thus charge sensitivity as Q is equal to d theta by dq which is equal to n a b by c into 2 pi by t into 1 by 1 plus lambda by 2 these are all from the previous equation okay we actually have already hence lambda here lambda by 2 may be neglected and it can be written as okay 2 pi by t into current sensitivity current sensitivity sensitivity by neglecting obviously lambda okay by neglecting lambda by 2 so this is all this is how we finish our uh, series of lecture on ballistic galvanometer thank you very much